All right. We are back. This is the Hearthstone.fi Monday Night Community Tournament number 38. My name is Marko Solin Koskirta. I'm joined by Ville One Must Fall Tomisto. And we're going to get the second semifinal going as fast as possible. Since the players have already started, so we're going to go ahead and join the match. Between Erkas of Russia and uh, Scythe from Hungary. So, could you enlighten us as to which classes the players have brought? And they luckily haven't started without us, so we'll be able to join the match from the start. Yeah, I actually, yeah. Just noticed the same. Uh, we have Erkos has bring a druid, uh, a war warrior and warlock, and Han uh, Skuthe has bring a hunter, warlock and warrior. So, Warrior and Warlock for both players, while Druid and Hunter differ. That's gonna be more than likely, uh, once again, matches decided by the mirrors if they happen. Since, uh, let's say, the Hunter starts from Scythe. And it faces off against the druid. But depending on the druid style, it's gonna be quite difficult if the druid gets a good ramp up early on. Those taunt minions in the way. And yeah. It, it seems I have bugged out. Yep, I have bugged out. We will rejoin. At least the previous bugs with the cards not being chosen properly has been fixed, but still a few kinks to be ironed out in the system. We can see the starting hand decisions from both players. Scythe is playing a Demon Zoo variant, the Void Terror, a dead giveaway. Heh, see what I did there? Yep. <laughs> Versus Erkos' Patron Warrior. Mm. This matchup used to be a little bit lopsided in favor of the patron, but if that zoo warlock is able to accelerate itself into enough speed to roll over the warrior before it gets the chance to really react, yeah, it could still be easily winnable. No fire war axe, just the dead spite. And the void walker will live to tell the tale. Mm. I think he's actually gonna coin out the pilot shredder next turn because you don't really want to avoid tether either one of those. No. Uh, well, minions. if he gets something nice to tree drop, maybe play that. But the pilot shredder against warrior is actually quite nice. So you want to bring that out. Definitely. It's one of those sticky minions that don't really have a downside unless they spawn a doomsayer. But actually, placement yeah. is correct. Placing it between the two is good. Well done by Scythe. Scythe. But yeah, I actually think that nowadays when uh, Patron Warriors sometimes run the Brawl, I think this matchup is a little bit better for Warrior. But still it's 55-45, so it's anybody's game. The Brawl is a big issue against uh, Zoo players. If you bring it, you've got a pretty good chance. If you don't, eh, kinda I like it. Um, yeah. At least if the knife juggler is already getting good value. It's beginning turn five for the warrior. He is forced to use the weapon attack from the dead spite and bring himself down to 15 if he goes into the pilot shredder. At least he'll be able to start spawning more patrons. Up um, to take out the knife juggler though. Uh, would you would you agree with that knife juggler removal? Well, dep uh, well, yeah. I actually think it's good because if you get bad luck, the pilot shredder will be spawn will spawn something where will actually kill another uh, patron, and I will like kill the other patron. So taking out the knife chakra means that he can straight out trade to what happened, like what you have in the board. So this actually leaves something in the board if he doesn't have something like implosion or silence. Yeah, anything that would boost damage output as well. Like, uh... 
let's see. Abusive Sergeant onto that Haunted Creeper would have also been enough. The Doom Guard from the hand would have been enough. Yeah, but he has to has to use it for it for that and can go to the face. So you want to try to maximize the damage what your creatures take. Granted, that is great. I would be called. Which one summons the ghoul or which one summons the acolyte? Mm, I think you silence the ghoul and go for the face. In this point, giving the cards is not that bad when you are pushing to lethal. And you've got a lot of one ones on the board. Yeah. So it, it's it's more favorable, and you can actually use so your uh, like one one taunter and your haunted creeper to kill. If need or something, but actually it's just want to go to the face. You, you might want to pop that one of the uh, Defender of Fargus could also be used on the Frostwolf Grant to deny any other card draw from the Acolyte. Oh game. yeah. So you could get a 3-3 three, three to stop the 1-3 and stop My the second 1-3 as Argan. well. You like it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if he leaves the 2-2 two, two up though, yeah, there is a possibility for more card draw. And you'll be faced in a situation where he can pop the Haunted Creeper and spawn only one. One, one, instead of two. So, yep, it would have given three less damage, but that Battle Rage would have been less effective. Many, many other cards would have been less effective. No, Not as much card draw from the Acolyte thing either. Yeah, I think he just tried to get just, like, easy uh, lethal oh, range, even through that shield, shield pop, what we, we did see. So. 13 hit points versus 3, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, plus 5 from the hand if he sacrifices 1, 1, 1, which gives 1 armor. That is lethal. Yeah. That's Let's exactly. See Scythe. Scythe sees it. Yep, he sees it. Well played. 1 0 series in favor of a Hungarian player using his zoo warlock aggression to overwhelm the warrior before he has a chance to combo down. Exactly on turn 7 as well. So, pretty fast, pretty nice game. Well played by him. Yeah, that's really nicely played. He did get the curve really well out and just. Keep snowballing, and Warrior couldn't get his uh, whirlwinds, so that was or, quite or his or war axes on time. Yeah. Uh, pretty much no plays uh, for the first three turns. So, yeah, what are you gonna do from that position? It's uh, draw dependent to such a high level that I think there was no way for Atticus to actually win that match with those draws. Yeah, it, it, it's harsh. Like the problem with the patron is that you, you can have draws when you can't interact with the opponent. When the opponent is playing much faster deck than you are, then you are quite bad luck. Now you have quite bad luck. Bad luck. You can't do anything. Double man scientist and a freezing trap. Well, at least one of those man scientists and the trap will definitely go out. Unleash the Hounds versus a Warlock. Well, if it's a Zool or Warlock, you think it's got a whole lot of value. If you think it's a Handlock, you toss out, toss out the Unleash and hope for an early game drop. I personally would only like to see either one or two Mad Scientists and hope for a one drop for turn yeah. one. And there we go, Leper Gnome. Nice. One, two, and turn three, either coin out these guys or move less. And third mana in some other fashion. Oh wow, could even freezing trap the planet, but unfortunately the freezing trap is a really bad draw right now. You don't want to see it from anything other than the Mad Scientist death rattle. Yeah. 2-1, trading efficiently into the flame amp. You can drop the scientist to contest the Honda Creeper. Yeah, it doesn't look that bad for the hunter. He he still has the er, like these earlier drops. Of course, that void terror will be annoying, but 
you have tools to get rid of that Nerubia. Definitely. I think the Shredder right now is a very nice top deck for it. Yeah. A very nice filling out the curve a last turn. Uh, without it, his turn four would have been clunky, to say the least. It would have been very hard to predict how it will work out. Almost not attacking with a 1 2 for Atticus. It would have been one off lethal at some point. Every bit of small uh, missed amount of damage might end up being a big factor. Now here you could trade the 4-4 four, four Nerubian out with the Shredder. Mm, but the 4-7 is a much bigger threat and you cannot handle the Void Terror with the Freezing Trap if those Spectral Spiders are still up. So do you go for the slower approach into the situation and kill off the one ones with your minions or do you want to go for the value plays kill off the four one? I guess he wants to go for the slower chance. Ergos should be able to smell it and attack with the Nerubian if he attacks at all. Yeah. First. I I kind of like this play, but I, I think if he has uh, anything else than freezing traps in the deck, I would go and trade that Nerubian away at least, and then maybe, I don't know. Well, um, there's really no reason not to attack with the Nerubian, it's just three mana as is. You would have a five mana Nerubian in your hand. The one one yeah. is free to roam, the four seven free to go face. Uh, misdirection is non-existent. Snipe is non-existent. Snake traps, it could be. Some hybrids run snake traps, but then he would just need to go face. Oh, oh, is he afraid of maybe explosive trap? Because explosive trap I, could clear yeah. all those one ones. Yeah, so, I think he was, but you should test that out before you go. Like before you go for implosion. Just to get that. Because you get punished like really bad with this one. Like. Yep. <laughs> if the hounds get unleashed, it's gonna be bad. That freezing trap only has one target, that is the boy I think he should hero power now instead of the mad scientists. Get more card value out of it. There we go. Yeah. No targets for the void caller either. Well, there's one. So you could in theory go void caller. Power overwhelming. Oh, drop the Doom Guard from it, but even then, the freezing trap is going to be problematic. Yeah. I think you have to attack with this Void Terror and just take the trap out. The fact that Erkas did not attack with the 4 4 before he played the implosion as well talks in favor that he didn't think that turned through because of the fact that. Uh, had he attacked with the 4-4 four, four into the face first, then if it was the explosive trap, it would have done no damage at all. If it was the freezing trap, it would have gotten the smallest cost minion that you can reliably lose at that stage. And then the implosion would have been safe so on many levels. So, yeah. yeah, lots of things going awry in that combination of plays. Scythe, meanwhile, being able to push Ergos down to 12. Mm. And still, if he attacks with the 4 7 first after all this setup, then it means he's really nervous and doesn't remember oh, yeah, there's a freezing trap up. Or if he wants to utilize the battle cry again. I think he wants to try that just Hail Mary getting out stuff. Hopefully, it will be Doom Guard and just clearing more out. Yeah, he's got a 50% chance to get the Doom Guard out with that Void Tether. Uh, the 3-4 needs to attack somewhere first, and if it attacks into a scientist, then you get another freezing trap, then your Doom Guard becomes useless. Trying to race the Hunter at this stage, not gonna work. No, you, you did need to clear out stuff. The beasts need to be cleared out or the kill yeah. commands for themselves will be oh, no. This is it. Series going 2-0 in favor of Scythe. 
He's got enough mana for the kill commands, I'm sure he sees it. Well played. Yeah. And I, I think, like, you did have the Uzi and you had whole damage. If you want to play around a weapon, you can play your Uzi out and just force him to destroy the Uzi, or you will just get it back to your hand with 4 mana. It's still really good 4 mana to destroy a weapon. Definitely. Um, the ooze wasn't really a factor there. I think the main point where the game went awry for uh, Erkos was the fact where he didn't attack with the Naruvi. Yeah. And that was one of the turning points, in my opinion. Uh, previously, I don't think there were any major mistakes in his own line of Azul strategy. Only a warrior left for his side. Versus Erika's whole lineup and the druid. The upper druid is a good matchup against things like a patron warrior. And it is indeed a patron warrior. Yeah. Hmm. Would you throw out the dead spite from this hand? The Warzone Commander definitely is one of those cards you can throw out as well. Well, the fairy war axe is really bad in this matchup. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So. so. Yeah, Dead Spite is decent. You can you still, still can do stuff with it, so... You use the Dead Spite to clear out things like Keeper of the Grove and... Yeah. The Fire War Axe is definitely worse of the weapons. Uh, for uh, you sort of framed my question wrong there previously, yeah. but I'm sure you got it. Yeah, but Fairy War Axe has a one, like, thing what you can do with. You can play turn two and just hit, hit his face, because that's the only thing you can most likely hit with it. So. It is 12 damage from the fire and war axes by themselves. Yeah. So they're not that they're not useless. Nox. And if they should the Noxomas were somehow unstealthed, then it could also be taken out, but I don't think that's gonna be happening. Yeah. <laughs> I doubt it quite hardly, but yeah, you never know. Hmm. But like now you have inner weight combo in your hand uh, and a swipe what you can use just to push damage. It's it's quite scary. Yeah, the swipe could also be used on the armor smith though, so... Yeah. Pointing out the dead spite, I think that was the only option I've had, really. Well, you can yeah. play just fire war axe. You're left with unused mana crystals and unless you coin into hero power and you never kind of want to do that. Yeah. This also deters the opposing side of the board from playing any minions with five or less health. Unless you're talking about one or two health. There's a swipe into the armor smith. Not gonna utilize the death rattle from death spite. You need that for the grim patrons. No. You can't really play anything except battle rage for one cord. But I, I think you have to do it because you have so awkward hand that I think your only way is to actually like take one card with the battle rage. Because if you just armor up and throw it so already in a six mana, it's it's scary. True, you know you're not in combo range, but I don't think you're afraid of the combo as much as you're afraid of big minions coming down. Yeah. Alright, we're up pass. Respectable, very respectable. Difficult choice to make. Yeah, that Azure Drake is not the best creature, but it's something that you have to answer. So. It's at least decently curving out. Yeah, one mana crystal is left out, but it's much better than the other options. You know, while we're doing your card in the process, so. Okay, so double battle rage. Now you have to do something with those. Yeah, next turn he can actually just. Uh, I think he can either just go for force of nature, push damage, or go inner, uh, inner weight scenarios. Oh. Okay, well, yeah, we can get out more out of this. Now it's two cards. Uh, yep. Placing that three mana uh, hunter on the board on purpose before proccing that whirlwind so you can get two cards from the battle rage. 
just so we're clear on why it was done the way it was. Mm. I think there's much to say about Side's hand right now. Etikos' hand also pretty much writing itself. Lots of combo cards and a scenarius combined with an excessive wild growth. So. I would go for Force of Nature and just clearing, clearing the 4 1 and hit 2 to the face. Next turn, you can hmm. inner weight out scenarios and then go for a combo. Uh, I think that puts it pressure on the board. You could also innervate the Scenarius right now. Innervate the Scenarius with the 2-2s. Two Those 2-2s two two stop the 4-1. And you would have 3 bodies left on the board. For your combo turn. One of which happens to have 5 points of attack points. Previously yeah. Already. So not playing the Scenarius, but instead playing a wild growth to play the scenarios next turn. Yeah, a bit slow for my taste. Yeah, that, that turn here it makes zero damage to the face and it's not a race but you have one to have quite fast clock against warrior. You don't want him to draw a lot of cards. Because um, in some point just draw things will go mad. I'm thinking about the Agile of Pain option right now. What now? Because if he uses the Inner Edge or the Whirlwind for the activation from there, it's one less for the Unleash the combo. Um, I must choose. Battle Rage for one. Or Acolyte first, then Inner Rage, then Battle Rage for two, and he's drawing three cards. Speak to me. Guess he's going for it. Yeah. mana for two cards not a bad deal would you think? No, it's, it's if you have a card but say draw two cards with two mana you would play in every deck what you can so that works pretty much there's the scenarios two twos ahoy and your hit point pool being six five on the shade means that the shade can properly attack this team that for lethal next turn. If it doesn't attack, then it's gonna be harder to find the lethal. Hmm, interesting. I actually got the wrath bug. I yeah, I fixed this. No, it, it oh, oh, yeah, no, yeah. Anyway. it's just too low. So a bit greedy pay if there is an some kind of enabler and two executes this will be quite bad, but what are the odds? They are quite low, but uh, the warrior player has already drawn more than half his deck, so Oh yeah, yeah. It's a chance that it is there. Definitely the execute is gonna get played on the 6-5, I think. Gives you with six mana. Yeah, I think you have to go like execute, cruel taskmaster, put one damage to scenarios. Uh, if you would have something like BDH, P PGH, you could kill it, but you have to use second execute. Uh, then you have three mana, you can use an acolyte, or you can put a fire, fiery war axe and actually kill one of those stone guys and get some value out of it. All right, so going for the non-charging patron combo. And an execute on the 6 5. Everyone! Get in! Everyone! Get in here! Hmm. Downside here being that, in theory, Edicus can now easily kill off the Grim Patrons. There's only two or three hit points left. Oh, and that's actually lethal. Yeah. Lots of trends. Handle it. This time, Scythe could not. And Edicus takes this. Well, even it should be the Druid's matchup in any case. Play down his point, tying the series, to, uh, or actually not tying it, but making the series a bit tighter by putting it at 2-1. Sadly, so he's still in the lead with two wins and only needs his warrior to win one match. It'll either be against a Mirror Warrior or a Warlock. 
Wow, okay. What? Uh, there was a rather large audio static signal from your side. Let's okay. Not let that bother us. Sounded like a Commodore 64 loading signal. Well, I was loading on the game, so. Oh, well, we've got the Commodore sounds back, guys. Yeah. Have you seen the retro remake of Hearthstone on Game Boy? What? Yeah, no. somebody did, uh, I think it was like six months ago, a drawing of what Hearthstone would look like if it were a Game Boy play, and it was, or a Game Boy game, it looked yeah. awesome. Oh my, I have to check it out for this cast. You can go ahead and look for it while we check out the cards from both players starting hands. Scythe, pretty slow, no, double no machine render, but the Fire War Axe at least is still there. It costs not the one drop you want, you've got the Abyssal Sergeant, but at least you've got something. The Swamp Boos will do its magic either on the Fire War Axe or on the Dead Spites. If you were really passive, really passive, you could just go hero power, but yeah, for a while, makes more sense. Yeah, you can control more of this board with just axe, and this ink gang boss will be a little bit annoying, but I think you can still quite easily handle it. Slam, removal. Yeah, it, it leaves one one, but it's okay. Oh, going for the frothing instead. Aren't we a little cocky today? Hmm, that's actually interesting because he has quite good plays for turn 4 and 5 against these kinds of decks. Hmm. If he plays the acidic swamp pose right now. Is that a good thing? Is it a good thing for Scythe? That usually means it doesn't have another one for four mana weapons. I kind of like this. Like, uh, it's a bit gamble to just try to get that board advantage by destroying the like resources what the opponent has. Now it pays off, but it's 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 still a gamble. So. Definitely. Mm -hmm. The Taskmaster could be played onto your own dude, which would make it a 5 3. I wonder. But then what? Oh. To, to run to Ink Gang boss and then the 1 1 will kill it? So it's. Yeah, yeah not efficient. You could slam the Azik Ooze, but you could get a card out, out of that, so it's still quite bad. You can, yeah, you can kill them. I think you can get a 4-1 and hope he doesn't have Mortal Coil or something. Well, no Mortal Coil in the hand, but we do see an implosion. So the implosion is a 100% guaranteed way to get rid of that. Front. Yeah. The animations do take quite a while, but I'm sure they'll be able to manage it if they start way before the rope. Yeah. I oh, Void Terror plays. Hmm. First yeah, this that. 4-1. Oh, he eats everything. This is greedy. Hoping for no BGHs. No executes. Not even... Turn and yeah. brawl. <laughs> not, not brawl. Turn and brawl, just basic brawl. Yeah. I, I, yeah, well, it, it only leaves one one behind, so it's not that bad, but, but this will make him sad. Sometimes you can take risks. And it's yeah. Not very often. I'd like to see the armor smith now over the unstable ghoul myself. Yeah, I, I think you want to save the ghoul to. when you already have imps on the board and armor smith will be a part of a combo. Yeah. Yeah. Pass me that arc light 
Star Bro. What is he fishing for, though? I think he's just fishing for his combo parts. Mm. If you pop that ghoul into the opposing void color. Two for him, two for you. A couple hundred grand? And you're gonna get a bunch of gold. Well, let's not say what ton, but you're gonna get a lot of armor. Yeah. But still, like, there is a board, but you have to answer, like, decently fast. Like, it, it's it's getting in a point that you are going to, like, you are starting to lose the race on the board. So you have to find something, I think, by just playing war, a uh, very war actually just killing the in gang boss would be a good idea i guess scythe wants to get as much draw as possible getting like five cards from a single battle rage filling up his hand nicely think about the future more than the current situation five damage on board yep that's one value trade never to be lost yeah Done. At least there's a patron now, but he still needs the Warzone Commander for it. Well, didn't want to go for Knife Juggler and Implosion game. Okay. He could still trade for at least Acolyte and something and get quite a lot of damage to the board and like basically clear the whole board. Would be vulnerable for seas like whirlwinds, yeah. Mm. You do lose your own, well, one of your own dudes. And yeah, and actually, if he would have a warzone commander and brothing, it would be scary brothing because he would get like billions of damage. Yeah, out. definitely. After this game, I think I'll have to take a short break myself. My focus is. Starting yeah. to crumble a little bit. But I'm sure you'll manage just fine yeah. by yourself. Now we just get a few patrons. Well, actually, four. Well, there are a few. And then just roll when he gets the board back. And now it starts to be quite bad for Warlock. He needs to find some other answers. And actually, yeah, he still can play the weapon. So it's full board fight for the war uh, Warlock. Uh, didn't he have two notion manners on the board earlier? Yeah, but he did attack one for the... Uh, yeah, uh, there comes the second seed, so it's 3-1. Um, we have the final players for this Hearthstone.fi Monday Night Community Tournament number 38. It will be Scythe versus... Uh, I believe it's the French player uh, DJ. DJ. And we will get them set up going uh, real fast. Don't go anywhere, we'll take a short break.